Halifax with the ball in the blue and white hoops. The team drawn first out of the bag, retained the normal strip, so Hull in the black jerseys and the white boot. And I think that uh, kick from Halifax already showed the difficulties against the wind. First scrum of the match. Kevin Dick to put the ball in, and that's a good scrum. But a knock on. Nerves, I think, there from hole number 13, Gary Devotee. Players like an early touch of a ball in, the, in a big match like this. Forwards just settling the game down. Neil James, number eight, there playing at prop forward position, has been a second row. And it's a big problem, Morris, to, to get away from your 25 yard in this uh, wind, isn't it? It is indeed. Here's a chance already. Oh, good run here from Tony Anderson. And that's the way one's got to approach this almost Yale Force win here. You've got to run the ball. Halifax then in possession. Holiday. Good run by Dixon. I think this second row, number 12, Paul Dixon, playing for a Great Britain tour place. Paul Fletcher. Oh, well done by Fletcher. Tim Wilby. And I was especially surprised to see this lad playing. He's a very much travelled player, this uh, full centre. He's been in France, he's been in Australia. But he's back looking for a cup final medal. Oh, and that's a glorious kick. Whether that goes in touch or not, a superb kick. Punishing uh, Halifax. Those are the sort of kicks I think we'll see from Gary Pearce. won this cup twice surprisingly had 10 losses at Wembley they've always been the, the bridesmaid whereas Halifax have won the cup five times and of course are the holders of the cup beating St Helens last year by 19 points to 18 but a forward pass Just trying to get Keith Neller in there. Wants those feet back, and that's a good heel. Pierce. Good player, this lad. He struggled somewhat last season. He was about a stone overweight. He hadn't adjusted to the fitness levels and the extra speed of rugby league. He tells me this season he trained throughout the summer. And of course. Pierce is also a key man for kicking the goals. Ninety-two goals already to his credit for Hull, second in the goal-scoring charts. And of course, our viewers in Wales will remember his performances with Clenetley over 420 points, 426 points there, a club record. And he's having a lot of trouble with this this wind, isn't he, Morris? Yes, and I think this is a pattern of play we'll see, Ray. The team's playing with this wind. They'll be playing down in this bottom 25 at Adding Lane, and we were saying earlier, very difficult to get out. In the modern style of kicker, round the corner. Kicks with the instep. Just outside that 25. No. Well, not very often this lad misses those from that range, but I don't think he's quite judged the nature of the wind at the moment. Swirling around here, although it's from left to right on our screens, it is favouring Hull, but really swirling about. 
So just five minutes gone, still no score each. Fletcher. Using these close forwards, Gary Devote just looking for that good ball, ball player. This number 13, Scott Gale, one or two of these Australian uh, players, I think, especially Gale. And uh, this man, number 11, here, Terry Regan, uh, will not be used to these conditions. That's a good kick from Kevin Dick. Oh, beautifully judged by Graham Eady. Well, he may be in the twilight of his career, Graham Eady, but certainly he's got the experience. And of course, when you catch the ball now in that in goal area, the 25 yard tap. And I'm sure Hull coach, really, Tony Dean and Keith Hepworth Morris, have said keep Halifax down here, haven't they? Yes, he'll be looking for a big tackling game from the two Australian second rows, Ray. He'll also be looking for Gary Vaughan, which will be working on the fringe of the rook of the play, the ball on defence. But uh, it's going to be very difficult indeed to get out of this 25 against this win. Bob Grogan. <laughs> Superb kick. Number 13, John Pendleberry, very sensibly there. Interesting to see, keeping the ball very, very low because of the wind. Almost a long-distance grubber kick, if you like. Kevin Dick to put the ball in. He should certainly know this Headingley pitch. Had many good years here with Leeds before joining Hull. Tomlinson lost the ball. McCallion, this is good play now. Paul Dixon didn't like that. To Les Holiday. £60,000 buy this uh, second row, Les Holiday for Swinton just before the cup deadline. Good play, Bob Grogan. Day again one of these forwards who likes to drive for the gap tries to hold himself up and then offload the ball to somebody in support Pendlebury Pendlebury again well very ambitious there for a drop Morris I think especially against this wind and it was too far out there can strike a nice ball with John Pendle, but about a little bit too far out against this almost go for us win. Now it's Hull's turn to get out of the 25. I don't think it'll be long ago though before we see them put the foot to the ball. Scott Gale. Well, certainly from the colour of his legs, he looks as though he's been in a different climate in Sydney for this past three months. Play on to referee McDonald. To Colin Whitfield, operating on the wing at the moment. Usually full back or centre. Some good hard forward play going on here. And as Morris was saying, that number 12 there, the all-tackling Balmain forward playing for Hull in the second row, David Brooks. There he is again, that's a good ball, but that's a better ball. Now there's a chance for Whitfield. It's a case of pace. Engine has it up. Yes, Colin Whitfield. Well, I was only saying, Morris, normally a centre, normally a full-back. There was a wingman's chance, and Colin just didn't have the pace, did he? Some superb handling by Halifax gets Colin Whitfield away up the touchline side. Just watch out, John Cattle inside, points to the fullback. I've got the inside look, he says, you take him on the outside. 
Beautiful pitch covered in by John Cannon and a good tackle from Fletcher. And a good ball for Hull to win. And Gary Pearce sensibly just bringing the ball away, letting his forwards break up, let them take the ball away to Wilby. Just ten minutes gone, no score. And Scott Gale, this uh, chunky Hull centre, certainly looks to have acclimatised himself well. He's only uh, been here for five days. That's a good ball from Gale. It's a tester for Whitfield, and he's up to it. Now there, Morris, we saw full-back play, didn't we? Uh, this could be a good ploy by Chris Anderson playing Colin Whitfield on the wing for his expertise as a full-back in windy conditions. Very good catch indeed. Holiday there, trying to get the ball away. We notice Holiday first or second receiver most of the time as the playmaker but Grogan well picked up by Dixon and Kevin Dick he's a, he's a chunky lad for the scrum half he, he certainly uh, up to the tackling job, oh, and there is Holiday. A good pass, but they've lost it. Now, if Hull pick that up, the advantage should be played. It isn't. Yes, Mr. McDonald are judging that the kick would be to the greater advantage of Hull. And I think it was an offside decision. Yes, he's saying that. And a good decision there, Morris. Uh, it was advantage to Hull. But I think uh, referee MacDonald felt that Pierce could take greater advantage from the kick. Yes, it was indeed. It was a very good piece of positional play by the referee to see the, uh, the offside. John Carroll, uh, number 10 for Hull. Very experienced forward. Had good service with Batley. Will be. One or two raised eyebrows over number three, Tim Willby, having the preference over experienced test four player James Lulawai, but uh, beautiful ball here to Devote. That was good play and good combination there amongst the forwards. Kevin Dick. Now then, here's a chance. Pierce to Gale. That's a beautiful ball to O'Hara, but that's a good tackle. Martin Meredith, again a man playing out of position, the Halifax number two, but up to the task, and the six tackle, so the handover after six tackles. Good effort there from Dan O'Hara, but Meredith certainly a good tackle. And Hull, Hull looking lively in possession, Morris. That was a superb move, but some good support players, particularly by Gary Devoto picking the ball up late in the movement. Just another man in support, and Halifax could have been in trouble there. Paul Fletcher, good play again. Oh, already giving Eastwood a goal. But good cover, both of these sides like to play open rugby. I think we'll see these wings in operation a lot. Good drive there from Terry Regan. Oh, Kevin Dick. Very experienced player, very strong player too. One of these uh, scrum halves who almost like a, a loose forward in build. Dixon. But of course, 15 minutes gone, I think. Uh, uh, Halifax coach Chris Anderson will be happy with that score, nil-nil. He'll not be too bothered as long as Hull don't get many points this half. His turn will come in the second 40 with this win. I'm sure they'll take equal advantage of it. Bro 
Morgan. And the sixth tackle coming up, and, and difficult to, to kick. Oh, that's a nice uh, effort to Tony Anderson. Well covered by Dan O'Hara. I had a letter from uh, some youngsters at Brighton College who have taken up rugby league and have in fact played a match well. Any of those youngsters watching, there's a good tactic from Rugby Union there, covering a cross field. O'Hara did very, very well to come inside. Oh, beautiful ball from Duvorti. And certainly, Morris, these whole forwards, they look six or seven pounds bigger than Halifax. They're causing problems in midfield, aren't they? They are indeed. And Gary Devote is causing the most with his superb ball handling. And, of course, Regan and, uh, and Brooks and Tawaz is supporting very well. Gale will be. Continuous pressure, an attempt at drop from Dick, but no. Graham Eady. Sensibly holding on to that ball. A tribute to Eady's fitness 15 years ago since he won his first Australian cap, and here he is leading side out in a cup semi final. get the feeling in the second half that these two uh, second rows for Halifax though Dixon and Holiday could do some running I think with the wind behind them they could indeed Ray. Dixon's been operating wide out oh that's a good run from Paul Fletcher Kevin Dick again launching Alan Tomlinson and he's a big weapon to launch is this young prop forward Dick again to Patrick, to Wilby. Now then, they've got a 4-3 to three here, but Pierce has held on. A knock on. Certainly, I think, uh, Terry Regan, yes, I think he's signifying there to Gary Pierce. Let me have the ball earlier. Just a moment's hesitation by Pierce there. Stop the promise of the movement. There we see, all, all in possession. Gary Devoto has missed then, Tomlinson a wide pass out to Pierce. Pierce decides to come back inside, slips a one-handed pass and Regan spills the ball. A definite knock-on. And Hull making good use of this scrum advantage, four scrums to one so far. But there is one for Halifax. And a penalty. Referee John MacDonald judging that the Hull loose forward, Gary Devoto, offside. Breaking forwards around the scrum rather than going back. <laughs> Holiday again, but a knock on. The ball will be very wet we had a, a lot of rain early on uh, this morning it's only stopped about an hour and a half before the kickoff the pitch very very heavy and mess I still think on the top it'll be skidding along Kevin Dick to put the ball in and it is whole ball Pierce looking for the gap oh good ball to Devote just hadn't got the support Kevin Dick got sandwiched between two Halifax tacklers and a penalty just throwing the ball between his legs you have to put the ball on the floor and play the ball with your foot and Kevin Dick well he's been in the game long enough to know that I think a little bit of excitement I, th I think one thing about Hull Morris they are playing the ball very very quickly to try to catch Halifax out aren't they yes this seems to be the major part of the game plan to uh, to attack down the sides of the play the ball and uh, this is where we're seeing some quite good support play from them 
we were saying earlier here about Dixon, the Halifax second goal running wide, is also a devastating runner close to Liverpool to play the ball. And I think in the second half we'll see him vary his game a little bit. He'll be coming a lot nearer. Still no score halfway through this this first half. I'm sure that the whole camp will be beginning to worry a little. to Grogan Pendleberry had a neck injury the last couple of weeks so just clear for fitness this morning oh that's a good ball a risky ball now if it can get out Wilkinson he's got a 2-1 out here but a good cover tackle and the six tackle that's twice we've seen Halifax there on the six tackle and the ball handed over one of the problems of the difficulties of kicking against the wind John Carroll with an injury Referee John McDonald sensibly stopping play. Normally in rugby league, the physiotherapist or the trainer allowed on the field and the play can continue, but if it's considered serious, then the referee has the option of stopping it. And I think many people in rugby league very pleased to see Hull in this semi-final. They've had the problems this season. They've had crippling debts. They've had to sell players like Schofield and uh, Crooks to Leeds in order to recover some finance they were threatened with relegation and suddenly that spirit on Humberside has pulled through and here they are nil apiece against Halifax Steve Robinson this puts the ball in again but another one against the head and certainly this big whole front row of Carroll and Tomlinson winning the scrum six scrums to two already and we've had two against the head Dick oh that's a good ball Pierce just couldn't get away but well read Kevin again having a good game Patrick to Scott Gale took the ball standing still though really wanted to be running onto that ball but nevertheless just five yards from this Halifax line attempted drop by Gary Pierce no just to the right but well worth the attempt Hull certainly got to get some points on the board this half Morris with this win they have Ray they have indeed but of course there again we saw the ball on the full being caught by Whitfield in the goal there in a tap out on the 25 I would have thought Hull would have had a bit, been having a few more goals at, uh, at drop goal, Ray, with, with this win. In all fairness, though, Morris, they haven't really quite got near the post, have they? No, they've been looking a little bit too to release the ball to supporting players instead of sort of taking the tackle and setting one up, but uh, one point's are very, very useful in this competition. Scott Gale just having had a word there with John McDonald. Seamus McCallion. Oh, that was a good tackle. In fact, Paul Dixon was running almost half looking for the tackle. Holiday inside. Good ball. Tremendous burst there from Neil James, looking for support, it wasn't there. That's where the half-back should have been. I'm sure Coach Chris Anderson will be looking for where with Rogan and Robinson. To Pendleberry.
each one of these back three forwards. Dixon, Holiday, and Pendleberry. Good footballers for Halifax. That's a good ball to Reedy. Here's a chance. Tony Anderson. Meredith. Is it over the line? It's up to referee. No, he's not. Just inches short. And a scrum down. A split decision there for Mr. McDonald to give. And there was Aidy putting away Anderson. And look at this cover tackling there as the ball's turned aside to the winner. It's held inches short of the line. Tremendous cover tackling. Good cover tackles there by that Australian pair. Regan and Brooks. So Halifax's first real attack of the game. The referee John McDonald wanting the, the scrum further across in. The scrum, of course, must be parallel to the touchline. And that possession vital near this whole line. Pierce. Will be taking a little pressure off his forwards. I'm surprised Hull really, Morris, pursuing this idea of taking three uh, men from the play of the ball. Uh, surely they would gain the yardage with Pierce's kicks. I would have thought so. Yes, I've, I would have thought that would be the game plan, Ray. Kicking the ball early in the six tackles and gaining that uh, invaluable ground. We might see one now. And that's the sort of distance that Gary K. Pierce can pump the ball, but well covered by Graham Eady. He may lack the speed, Eady, that he had when he was the Australian test fullback, but he certainly got the experience to take up the right positions. Neil James, the number eight here, doing a very good job at prop. He only moved from the second row to the prop ball position two or three months ago. Grogan, but a good tackle. Good tackle by Hooker, Sean Patrick there on the legs. time we had a semi-final between these two sides got to go back over 80 years when Hull beat Halifax 10-4 it was close then and it's certainly close now still Halifax nil Hull nil just 11 minutes to go Morris how would you feel if you were coaching Halifax if I'm coaching Halifax I'll be highly satisfied Ray uh, the score at nil nil with this Gale behind us in the second half yes I, I'd be highly satisfied I'd be a little bit disappointed if it was uh, Tony Dean, I would have expected a few points on the board. These two Halifax prop doing well in the runs, but certainly at the moment not winning the battle of the scrums, and that's where it could be vital. Akalian. We don't get many Irish lads playing in the game of rugby, league, but there is one. Seamus McCallion came from the Bala under 19 side. I can remember Robin Thompson, the ex. Lions Union skipper, and I can remember Pat Reed at Huddersfield. Trying to get things into operation. Oh, that 
could have been a good ball from Carroll. He delayed it. And well picked up by Seamus McCallion. This hooker battling for the tour spot. Drogan again. To Whitfield. Dixon. Well backed up by Holiday. Some good tackling here, as we, as we might expect. Certainly, defences in Great Britain have tightened up. Well, a case of Tony Anderson there going without the ball, but well picked up by John Carroll and Patrick. Tomlinson good run only a youngster learning the trade at open side prop forward for Devote Regan it's a wild pass and certainly Keith Epper third on the whole bench wasn't very pleased by that Neil James, one or two of these forwards on either side, Morris, looking for that support and it's just not quite there at the moment yes is it? holiday and uh, james of course for halifax pendleberry nella that's a good ball to mccallion oh he's got it out to anderson and well picked up A whole player in the tackle as Anderson tried to get that ball out, knocked the ball out of his grasp. Very adventurous fullback, Paul Fletcher. Kevin Dick again. John Carroll. I think the motto is, thou shalt not pass, Morris, for both sides, isn't it? It's been excellent today, uh, Rez, particularly Halifax coming under the pressure uh, five minutes ago. Now then, here's a chance, Gary Devote. He hasn't got anyone with him, unfortunately. And a good tackle by Graham Edith. And the sixth tackle coming up. Hull still on the attack. And a difficult ball there for the Halifax loose forward John Pendlebury to take. He was half hoping the ball would roll over the line and he could just take it easily. He did. How times have changed when this draw was made a month ago everyone said that Halifax were the favorites and would be returning to Wembley and then suddenly Hull defeated Halifax and then last week defeated Wigan and the town got behind them again six tackle Tony Anderson and he sensibly knows he has to run it but a knock on Poor Martin Meredith there on the right wing. A knockout. Just five minutes to go in this half. And a penalty, kicking at the ball. Now then, is this worth shot a goal by Gary Pearce? He has kicked quite a lot of these from the touchline. But no, he's putting it in the corner.
That's all. Hold then. Six tackles. Can they put a try on the board before the half time? Good tackle there by Keith Neller. David Brooks. Well, looked high, but referee John McDonald was on the spot, said it was the chest. And certainly these whole forwards now putting the pressure on. Eager to get the ball. Oh, an interception. Gary Pierce was looking to get the ball back to Scott Gale. It was worth the attempt, but well read by McCallion. Better did. Usually a scrum half, this lad. But broke his jaw, was out of the game for 11 weeks, and Halifax coach bringing him along gradually. Nella. Holiday, Dixon. Well, he invariably beats the first defender, Morris, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, always been a very good running fullback, even in his Salford days. Uh, he was a good side stepper off both feet. Very elusive. Run. Both these time sides having great difficulty with this win, but there's a chance now. Teddy Regan just couldn't get his pass in to Kevin Dick. Scott Gale. That's better to Devote. That is a vital tackle by Colin Whitfield because two or three of the whole men on the right here were lining up. And the sixth tackle. Devotee looking for the drop. two minutes left in this first half I'm sure Halifax will absorb these six tackles they'll be looking to go in with a clean sheet at half time that's a good ball to James now then he's got blue and white to jerseys alongside him he's got Brogan and Brogan's got the ball Oh, he's cut back inside. I think he would have been better advised to stay outside. And Pierce has even robbed him of the ball. Well, a golden chance went begging there. If only Wilkinson, to my mind, had stayed on the outside. And Nickel Fletcher gallantly coming away again. Robinson. Robinson. This youngster played for the Great Britain under 21s against France last week. Coming up to injury time in this first half. What a feather in this Halifax side's cap if they could get points here now. Very rarely been into this whole 25-yard area. Keith Neller. And is it worth a, a John Pendlebury attempt at drop? To Edy, the sixth tackle. Now then, surely they'll have a go at a drop goal. But no. Tony Anderson tried to get the ball away to Benedict. Oh, and that's a, a costly slip there by Paul. Oh. 
so drop out now for home beneath the posts might be interesting to see how far Pierce can get that ball just look at it there swirling back and it's whole ball good piece of fortune there for Hull Morris just when they needed it uh, what a delicate situation a position in the field inside their own 25 it just showed how strong the wind is when that kick was held up by uh, by Gary Pierce good dummy by Patrick one of the ex Hull Colts players Oh, that's a good pass. But really, there, the whole half-back should be coming off that. That's how the move should work. A couple of forwards driving down the middle, and then the half-backs finishing it off to Whitfield. Good ball to Robinson. To Dixon. I get the impression, Morris, that actually these Halifax forwards are standing too flat at the moment to get any real pace or thrust going. Yeah, so it surely does in the second half yet there. They're moving the ball well now, but of course the... Uh the Nellers and the James of this world need a little bit away, and as David Brooks did a little early for Hull when he came from 15 yards on the burst. The kick didn't quite come off there for Tony Anderson. Kevin Dick again at first receiver, marshalling the operations, bringing these two powerful second rows David Brooks and Teddy Regan through Brooks from the Balmain club and Regan from Canberra Raiders Pierce back to Scott Gale just couldn't get away good Clamping tackle there by number seven for Halifax, Steve Robinson. Pierce again. Oh, that's a good run. And I'm surprised to see Halifax still running this ball out with this howling gale behind their backs. Really, they should be kicking this ball to the corners. Whitfield to Wilkinson. This is better now from Halifax. Pendlebury. And the sun finally coming through here at Headingley. No, Holiday's lost it. But really, Les Holiday was looking for close support work there, Morris, wasn't he? He was looking for another forward he alongside some, him. He needed someone very short to him, Ray. The, the, the first support player was too far away. He held the ball out like on a washing line and uh, no one came short. Oh, well taken by Patrick. To Fletcher, that's a good ball to Gale. That's a better one to O'Hara now then. He's a quick lad, this. He's beaten Dixon, he's got Edie on the inside. And a good tackle again by Edie. Good reading of the situation. He forced Dano Harder inside to Kevin Dick. Pierce. Certainly a whole lot more dangerous when they move the ball out wide. Attempted drop from Pierce, just skirted underneath the crossbar. Already got four drop goals to his credit this year. Just five minutes gone. Still, either side looking for the first score of the match. McCallion.
Pendlebury. That's a testing kick. To Eastwood. He's got Fletcher with him. Halifax coach Chris Anderson with looking eagerly to return to Wembley. He's done a marvellous job in three years. He's brought this side from second division to division one champions, the Challenge Cup winners and the Premiership runners up. Done a wonderful job, goes back to Canterbury Bankstown at the end of this season and Halifax looking for a successor to him. But he's not so happy at Halifax losing the ball there, Morris, is he? No, he just stood up, not a word at all, ended Chris, but uh, I think we both know the feeling, right? Frustration sets in when things like that happen for the coach. I just get the feeling, Morris, that Hull are moving the ball out wider and actually uh, having a better effect. Halifax seem to be concentrating down the middle too much. Yes, like we said earlier in the first half, Hull were, were producing some very good support play. Now they're widening it a little bit and looking dangerous. And this is uh, Halifax's problem. It's a penalty to Hull, but they've already been mopping the scrums up. 7-2 to two so far. Yes, feeding the ball into the scrum. Of course, Gary Pearce must uh, go for a differential penalty here. Only kicks a goal for foul play from the scrums, but electing to put the ball on the floor because of the wind, keeping that low trajectory. Sensible there from Pearce. Carroll. Now the whole supporters getting behind them. Dick. Certainly run very strongly these two second rows, Regan and uh, Brooks. John Patrick. He saw the gap, he went for it, this crafty little hooker. Devote, good tackling there, good tackling. From Les Holiday. Kevin Dick still, ball moving, Scott Gale, out to O'Hara. And Halifax done a good job there, absorbing the tackles. Back to Scott Gale again. Oh, that's worth a chance. He's missed it. Now then, that is a penalty, offside. Definitely there. And surely this must be a chance for Gary Pearce. Instinctively, the Halifax man dropped on the ball. And there we see Scott Gale chip the ball through, Mother just can't control it. Kevin Dick goes for the loose ball, but a Halifax man is stood in an offside position. Yes, it's a very, very difficult position there if you're the defending side. Les Holiday instinctively went for the ball. That's what he's trained to do. Unfortunately, it was offside. So, Gary Pearce. A very important kick for him. 92 goals so far this season. And probably one of the most important. It looks close, it looks comfortable to the post, but he's got to judge this win. Very strong kick, very powerful thighs. No, miss kicked it well to the left. So Gary Pierce not got his kicking boots on today. Had two attempts and missed two. Ten minutes gone. Still Halifax nil, Hull nil.
Tomlinson. No. Referee John McDonald are judging that the ball was lost by Alan Tomlinson, the whole player, so a scrum down. And it looks like Steve Robinson to put the ball in. It is, and it's Halifax ball. Edie. Good linking up there with Grogan. And a good tackle. Tim Willby, number three for Hull, spotted the danger, came inside. Oh yes, well done by Pierce. He spotted the pass back from Paul Dixon. Devote. We've certainly seen some good copybook tackling, Morris, haven't we? We have indeed. At all, I'm impressed by the work that this Terry Reagan, the second row man, where he seems, wherever the ball is, he seems to be. The sixth tackle, Scott Gale. Oh, a good pass to Wilby. No, into touch. I think really there, the whole centre, Scott Gale and Tim Wilby there. Really wanted Fletcher, the fullback, to be coming into the line. I think if Fletcher had been in the line, it could have been dangerous. But the handover there to Halifax. After the fixed fifth tackle there, any ball kicked direct into touch like that, handed over to the opposite side. To Fletcher. Regan. And I think Morris is going to take some player here with a little bit more vision than what's been shown at the moment, isn't it? I think uh, the tactics at the moment are a little bit pedestrian down the middle. They are indeed, but of course, defences are both defences are, are, are doing well there, and the, the, the tackling is man for man spotting. Possibly one of the flair players on the field could uh, bring a bit of uh, hope to either side. I think it could be someone like Grogan, possibly, who's had a good game up to now that could just make the difference. I think somebody's got to take a risk, haven't they? Yeah, they have indeed. Pendlebury. I don't think there's any way through there for Halifax around these rooks. Certainly the whole forwards close in. Regan Brooks devoted. Very, very sound in the tackle. He did. And this is the position that Halifax want to be. Edy calmly put the kick here to the 25-yard line. I don't think he was too bothered about touch as long as. Halifax can make hold, use these six tackles and not gain too many yards. Oh, well, that's superbly taken by Patrick. What a busy, industrious afternoon this hook has had. Twenty-five minutes left here in this Silk Cup Challenge Cup semi-final, and both sides grappling for the first points on the board. Whitfield. He did. All 
Holiday. Holiday there sensibly pushing the ball down to the corners to Fletcher had a good game this fullback picked up the ball well ran the ball out from defense yes and another six tackles referee John McDonald telling the players that the Halifax player struck at the ball Doesn't seem to be a gap in the middle, Morris, is there? Well, that's, that's the mark of the tight that defensive. Well, you know, Tomlinson's had a tilt of tilt during the game. He's, he's made a, a bit of yardage, but uh, I think, as I said, we'd have to be looking for the Grogans and Scott Gales of the tides to make head, real headway. I just wonder, would you be contemplating putting James Lulawai on the field for Hull? Well, James has very good uh, evasive qualities, possibly so. Possibly about another five minutes, Ray. See how things go. It is, it's very, very evenly matched. Referee John McDonald saying, Look, let the scrum get settled. Possession now. Vital. And those forwards will be beginning to tire. They've done a lot of work, especially a lot of tackling. Some of them, by the time this game's over, will have absorbed. 30 35 tackles a man. Halifax leveling up the scrums now, 7 to 5. Facts time and time again driving the ball back into the eager arms of these home tacklers, aren't they, Mike? Well, they're taking it one pass away from the rook and then switching it back. This is better, Wilkinson. Instead of the continuity out to whichever way the ball's gone round, there, they're switching the ball back after one pass. That's a good one. He's missed it. It's a knock on. Good kick there from Bob Grogan. The high kick, I think, that Halifax need. They've been putting one or two rubber kicks along the floor. There's no need to do that. They should use the strong wind. No, referee McDonald not happy with that. He's kept a tight grip of these scrums as this referee from Wigan. John McDonald, in his last season, retires at the end of this year. And that's a good ball, but no. Again, penalty. To hold, feeding. And really, that's not the time to feed the ball into your scrum. You want the ball, you've got your own head and ball. If you put it down the middle, that's sufficient. have been in tremendous form in the 80s one of the great sides of rugby league in the 80s they're bidding for their fifth appearance in nine years just 20 minutes to go Tim will be Pierce Easily taken by Tony Anderson. Robinson.
Pendlebury, that's a good half break. Carrying the ball, notice in one hand, trying to get the ball away. Holiday, he gets it away to Robinson. But Kevin Dick, full number seven, kept a close eye on this uh, young Halifax crew half. Pendlebury. Well taken by O'Hara, Scott Gale. Well, Paul Fletcher didn't like that, yes. Keep, keep it down, he says, to Neil James. There was Fletcher bringing the ball up, the left stiff arm tackle by Neil James puts him to the ground. Another good decision by Mr McDonald. And a... Well, I don't think Gary Pearce likes us. Just kick the ball smack in the commentary box. But Hull now showing good style. Pearce. Scott Gale. Could be interesting now. 18 minutes to go. Halifax nil, Hull nil. And Hull looking the livelier, looking the side. More eager to move the ball out. And the sixth tackle. Thirty years since Halifax beat Hull in a Challenge Cup semi-final in the days of the great forums like Wilkinson, Trail and John Henderson. But I really do think that they've got to put a little bit of trust into their backs now. I think they've got to get Anderson running. I think they've got to give Meredith a chance on the wing. He did. That's a good kick. Superb kick from Halifax fullback there, Graham Eady. And really, I think Morris, that's what this man should have been doing all during the second half. Well, right from the start of the game, Ray, we've, we've both said that tactics should be to kick the ball with this gale behind your back. Neither side's really done it or exploited it to, the, to its fullest, but that was one good kick from Graham Eady. Dick then to feed the scrum. The legs, the hooking legs there of McCallion and Patrick were almost out of the scrum there before he got down. Dick again, penalty, yes. Now then, good chance here for Halifax. Whitfield just edges them back. Differential penalty all from the scrums, except for foul play. To McCallion now. Short ball. Holiday. Pressure on Hull. Robinson, Halifax working one or two complicated little moves here to McCallion. But he meets a wall of black jerseys there. Callion again to Holiday. Just the half dummy, very successful. And I think even a drop goal coming away from here, Tell. Oh, there's a chance to Colin Whitfield. Hull had completely forgotten. The sixth tackle coming up now. Oh, that's a good ball from Nella to Grogan. But no, the tackle and the handover. So once again, 
Well, no, he's allowed. No, he's not. Gary Pearce to play the ball. So once again, the whole line then escapes, Morris. My word, really. That was some tremendous defence from the whole side. Several times it was stretched, but my word, some tremendous tackling. Clinging to this ball now to the dear lives. Pierce. To Edie. Scott Gale putting pressure on him. Oh, well done by Whitfield. He came inside from the wing well there. Helped his captain Graham Edie out of a tricky position. Pendlebury. Just 13 minutes left. Both sides getting a little desperate now. Holds. War song, old faithful, ringing round the terraces here. Attempt to drop from left. Les Holiday. Oh, yes! Just underneath. A good job. John McDonald was on the spot there, but what a good attempt there from Les Holiday. Here we see the long distance drop go with the gear behind his back, and you'll find the ball just drops short right in the middle of the crossbar. What a very good attempt by Holiday. a beautiful ball to Gary Pierce. he just hasn't got the speed to get there, Devoti trying his best to get with him, but Kevin Dick now, to Wilby this is better to Scott Gale, he's got Fletcher with him to O'Hara Meredith to beat, but no, just look at that Halifax cover five Halifax players across there Regan again driving in. One of our, the best forwards, I think, on view here this afternoon, Morris. It's his defence and his running of the ball, absolutely first class. Pierce was looking for the drop. Edie's lost it. It should be play on six more tackles. What a knock on. And that's a sad knock on there for Teddy Regan. He had the opportunity to give Hull six more tackles. He did well to take the ball. Off Graham Eady, but he lost the ball. But he looks to be all right, he's getting up. To Halifax. Paul Fletcher doing the soccer style trapping of the ball, but it was effective. Tim Wilby. And it would be interesting, uh, Morris, if there was a replay, whether Scott Gale, the Australian lad from Balmain, would be allowed to play in the replay in midweek. Indeed, I know it was only, it's only over on sort of short-term loan from Balmain, but uh, whether or not Hull could swing another few days, he's certainly a very classy player, eh? We haven't seen the best of him today, but he's very quick and very skillful. Well, we've got ten minutes left to see who will meet Wigan. Devoting. Now, could we have... A long-range attempt at a drop from Pierce. I think the weather is too bad. And Hull will 
want to keep Halifax pen down here. Halifax, four tackles to use here. I, I can't understand it, Morris, why they're, they're absorbing these tackles by bringing the forwards down. One kick would put all 70 yards back. Well, it, it would pull that big yardage back from very tight to their own try line. In fact, they're just wasting the, the, the tackles, they're wasting time, really. It's a penalty. Well, it appears that Mr. McDonald had shouted held, and once the referee has shouted held, then you cannot steal the ball. Referee John McDonald insisting that the timekeepers who officiate at all matches in rugby league stop the clock. The referee, of course, in rugby league, no longer the sole arbiter of time. And a knock on. Minutes to go. Halifax looking for possession. Halifax nil. Hull nil. But Anderson's lost the ball. Pierce has got picked it up well. Just couldn't get it away. Just couldn't get the half break. But that was a bad loss for Halifax to Kevin Dick. Patrick. Yes, and Kevin Dick there signalling, let's go for the post. I think we're going to see a drop goal on here. Terry Regan. Well, we haven't had a try for this over 20,000 crowd, but we might have a drop goal, I think. No, well, why did... Uh, Whole player there kicked the ball. I don't know, Morris. I think he must have miscounted. Well, they were, they were ideally set up for a drop kick at goal, 15 yards right in front of the post. Ray, uh, any farther out against this wind, I think, would be futile. But that was the ideal situation for Pierce or even Gary Devoted to have a pop. I think it must have been a miscount because Kevin Dick had signalled what the side should do, and everything was was in full operation. Fletcher, now then, he's got to get this ball back upfield again. Oh, that's good play to Dan O'Hara. And suddenly I think there are one or two gaps beginning to open up now as these forwards really tiring. Just six minutes to go, still Halifax nil, Hull nil. And surely the, the first score will settle this semi-final. Tremendous battle, superb forward display, tackling in the highest order, but still looking for a point. Devote, and the sixth tackle. That's a good kick from Pierce, very good kick from Pierce. He kept it low. Saw his opportunity. And, and this is the problem, Morris, with a, a wind of such intensity here. It, they really have to be right underneath the post to get a drop goal, don't they? Yes, that's why Kevin Dick earlier was setting up the position for all, pushing his, driving his forward on towards the sticks. 15... 10, 15 yards out is within, say, Pace's capabilities. Any further, even a great kicker like Pace would struggle. Just five minutes to go. And I think the bookmakers would have given incredible odds on this still being nil-nil at the final whistle. He did sensibly now, putting the ball downfield. And Fletcher will want to make as much yardage as he can. He'll want to cross that halfway line. O'Hara. 
Not had a lot to do, Dan O'Hara, the ex-New Zealand test player, but what he has, he's done well. He's performed sensibly. Regan. Done a lot of the graft, taking the ball away at the first receiver. Tomlinson. Just one missed tackle. One drop ball, one slip pass. And that could seal one of these two teams' fate. But the sixth tackle. Gale. Well taken. Good cover, good sweeping cover there by Robinson. Oh no, they've got to keep Halifax up here. <laughs> Holiday to James. Three minutes left. Holiday using that left foot to good effect. Just pushing Hull back. a good heel against the head a very good scrum to win Grogan to Edie oh five tackles to absorb What a fine tackling stint as man of the match there, Terry Regan had. Halifax now creeping towards that line, creeping towards the posts. Oh, good run from Neil Jones on the 25-yard line. Tremendous pressure building up here, an attempt to drop from Colin Whitfield, but no, to the left of the posts. Halifax had brought Colin Whitfield in from the wing. But still, Halifax nil, Hull nil. Just over a minute to go. If this is a replay, we'll be replaying on Wednesday night at Ellen Road, kickoff 7.30. And I'm sure we'll have a huge crowd. That's a good ball to Eastwood. And again, referee John McDonnell raises his arm, six tackles. And up and under, Edie's underneath it. He's got it. Well, they're both fighting for the ball, but I think Graham Edie will, will come up with it. He does. Approaching injury time now. Halifax have only got to hold the ball or put it downfield with a kick. This is one occasion when they will use five tackles, first of all. Callion to Pendlebury. Into injury time now. Robinson and the sixth tackle coming up. Surely they'll put a high kick on Fletcher. He does. O'Hara's back with him. He'll want to be sure, he'll want to be safe. And he'll not pass it, I don't think. Oh, he's lost it! And he's, 
Halifax have lost it again. And it's back to Hull. Well, I think everyone's heart was in their mouth. Well, Morris, there's the hooter. Halifax nil, Hull nil. That was some contest. It was indeed, with defences well on top, right from the first whistle, and I think 26...